service this morning. We're in about 25% capacity, so you got to worship four more times than you normally do. Amen. That'll work. But we're delighted that you're here today. And welcome all our visitors. So many families out uh, still with Christmas, but we're here to worship Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Let's stand singing on Hill together this morning. Glory to his name.
and that's exactly what's going to happen. It's, he's going to do wonders among us that we have never seen. I don't care if you've been, you know, serving the Lord 50 years. It's going to be fresh and new for each of us. And you only get to that place through intimacy. Being intimate with the Lord is where he reveals his secrets. It's where he speaks to you, where he gives you answers. And, and that's so important. And if we want the gifts of the Spirit to fall in this place, and we want the vision that's been prophesied over this place to come to pass, we have to be intimate. The gifts of the Spirit come, but first we need the intimacy. We need to know if we have gifts, that's awesome, but do we know how to steward them? Do we know how to? Are we going to know what to do with healing powers? And are we going to know what to do with the gifts that he bestows on this church? We will know if we are intimate with him. How he wants us to move and operate. There's a harvest out there. The Bible says the harvest is it's right. It's ready. The laborers are few. We need to pray for laborers. We need to pray for people to fall in love with him and get intimate with him. And to say, God, here I am. Use me. Send me. Send me. I want to go. The days of one foot in the world and one foot in the kingdom... God's demanding decisions Amen. to be made in your life, in your heart. Amen. You want him to purge. Amen. And the intimacy is where he purges us. It's where we're purified and we're cleansed. Yes, and we're taking it to a whole nother level spiritually. See, we haven't arrived. And if you think you have because you've been doing this for 60 years, no, you haven't arrived. And we level up spiritually. He wants to take us to a different place. And we have to allow him to do that. He wants to reveal things to us that hinder us and that holds us back from where he wants to take us. We have to allow him to do that. We like ourselves too much and there's things in our lives that hold us back. And we have to allow him to come in and remove what holds us back. We, we have to allow it. Sanctify yourselves. For tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Like we have to get to the point where enough is enough. I'm tired of seeing the mugshots on the Trinity Police Department Facebook. I'm ready to see those people just full of the Holy Spirit, receiving that deliverance and that freedom that only comes through Jesus Christ. It doesn't come through 12 steps at rehab. No. One step. One name. One step. One name. It comes through surrender. Surrender. Humble yourselves. We have to allow God to destroy the pride in our hearts. We have to allow him to deal with us on those levels. These things can happen, and I, I, I just, that vision and that prophecy over this place, I want to see it come to pass. But we have to grow intimate with him. That, that's the key right there, intimacy. So when those gifts do flow, we're going to know what to do. We're going to know how to steward. We're going to know. And we're going to see healing. And we're going to see miracles. And we're going to see deliverance and freedom. We're going to see restoration and deliverance. We're going to see depression gone. We're going to see anxiety gone. We're going to see suicidal thoughts gone. We're going to see our youth. Our youth. Where do you think the devil starts on our youth? He jacks their identity. We're going to see that crushed in the name of Jesus. They're going to know who they are in Christ. And I believe that it's through our youth that a lot of families are going to have restoration because they're going to be the intercessors that are going to bring their home to the yes, Right here. Right here. Our youth. He is going to work greatly in our youth. And I just, y'all, the excitement and the expectation 
my heart. I can't. I can't even begin to describe. And I pray that he places this excitement and this expectation in yours. Because we're going to step into something so great and we need to be prepared and we need to be ready to go. We need to be ready to go. And so join us New Year's Eve. Matt's going to uh, be leading praise. And if y'all want to join him, join him. But I want us to just come in and get to that place intimate with the Lord and just seek his face. Yes. And, and just, just seek him and love on him and just allow him to speak to us. And, and whatever happens, happens. I don't know what God wants to do, but all I can tell you is that he wants to do something because when he placed this on my heart, he was like, and so I, I know. God wants to do great and amazing things. Amen. And the time has come. Yes. And there's a, there's a lot of work to do. Yes, there is. And we have to see what it is that we need to do. We need to get into the word of God. We need to allow him to speak to us through that word. Amen. Yes. Amen. If he's called you, step into it. Yes. Don't hold back. Amen. Don't worry about what your ability or none of that. Because with him, you remove yourself, and it's all him. Yes. And that's what we need to learn. We yes. don't need to be concerned with what we can, we can't do. God can do all. Yes. We just need to be willing and available. Yes. So, the time has come. If you've been praying things for years, the time has come for those things to come to pass. Don't give up. I don't care how hard the battle is. That's exactly what we mean when we're talking about battle. It's for that harvest. Yes, we have to be ready to reach that harvest because the devil's going to come yes, harder. Amen. But with God, all things are possible. Yes, and amen. so you don't give up. You press harder. I don't care what you see. Right. It's in the spiritual where things handle. And once it's handled, there's victory in the spiritual. You'll see it in the And that's the thing. I want y'all to know this is about focusing on Him and praising Him, thanking Him, yes. and focusing on what we're stepping into. God, where are we going from here? Amen. And we're just going to allow Him to flow and do His thing. And I just ask for y'all to join us. And I have so many scriptures if you want to know about <laughs> sanctifying and purifying. And, and this is what God has called us to do. I have so many scriptures, but... <laughs> Call me or come to me. Or just let you know. Um, but yes, sanctify yourselves for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Yes. Set yourself apart. Commitment. Intimacy. To be de dedicated to a higher purpose. Yes. <laughs> just behold. Because like in Isaiah, I'm doing a new thing. Amen. I'm doing a new thing. And so... He wants y'all to be a part of that new thing. Yes. Amen. Amen. Don't miss out. There's nothing in this world. Nothing in this world matters. There's nothing in this world more important. Amen. Nothing. Nothing. Yes. Allow him to come in and remove the idols. Yes. Remove the things that hinder you, that hold you Amen. back. Because Amen. there's a new thing coming. Amen. And y'all want to be a part of it. Don't miss out. Yes. Don't miss out. So I pray that you join us. Um, we will be providing transportation. I know some people don't like to drive at night. That's totally understandable. So just get with me or Catherine and get with you too. And um, we're going to have a great time with the Lord. And I believe that we're going to hear from him. We're going to step into that different place with him. And if anything, just step into that, into that place of worship. And, and just... I don't know. I'm so excited, y'all. I'm just so excited because I believe it's going to be great. It's going to be grand. It's going to be only the beginning to Amen. what is to come. Amen. Amen. And we have to be ready. We have to be prepared. We have to be prepared for those that are going to be coming through these doors. Yes. They're going to be needing the healing and the compassion and the love of Christ. Amen. We have to be prepared for that. Amen. 
okay? Because, yes, we come in here to see each other, and I love every one of you. But the main thing we come in here to do is to praise Him. God, what is what is there to do today? We need to come in here Amen. about the Father's business. Amen. That's why we're here. It's got to be about the Father's business. Amen. What salvation needs to take place today? What needs to happen today? That's where our concern needs to be and our focus. That's what that's where we need to be. And so I love y'all. <laughs> y'all have any questions? Get with me or Matt or Catherine. And I hope that y'all join us. And it's gonna be fun, it's gonna be grand, and we'll just see what God does. Amen. Right, be Lord, that's acceptable. Amen. Amen. And uh, be sure to put that on your calendar. On our prayer list today, we have a numerous uh, amount of prayer requests. Pop Rhodes, Margaret Bynum, Sister Jeannie Doyle. They, she was exposed to COVID, so she's in self quarantine. Sister Denise Hannah was she uh, tested positive. She's gone. Day. Brother Wayne Williams on our security team, he uh, is in the hospital, or was in the hospital, due to COVID. Uh, my cousin, D.D. Hambrick, has COVID. We need to remember her over in Beulah, Texas. Surgeries tomorrow, uh, Sister Jennifer. Uh, my mom will be having surgery tomorrow. Brother Russell will be having surgery tomorrow. We need to remember them. Sister Sherry Zier's mom, we need to remember her really needs a touch of God. And I ask you to pray for me. At 2 o'clock in Batson, Texas, I have to preach a funeral today. So uh, if you could call ahead and tell them to leave that great odds alone. i got to get out of here. Uh, be there at 2 o'clock to preach uh, the Rice family. Charles Rice went home to be with the Lord. A great man of God. Bless you. And the shippers, yes. Uh, Renelda uh, so lost her husband Jack for so many years, and then Missy Compton, her daughter, passed, and uh, the day right after Christmas. And we need to remember the Nail and the Shipper family, especially with Compton, Brother Larry, and all those girls. That God will be their strength. So let's remember them uh, as well. And so before we pray, I, I've got just a recognition. I am glad Caitlin Edwards is home from the Navy. <laughs> Country. I'm very proud of her. Amen. Delighted also to have uh, Constable Elect Precinct 1. Uh, Jeremy, we love you and your family very much. You'll be taking office in January. Uh, I thank God for our first responder, our Sheriff Department, and all that they do. Really love you very much. Appreciate it. I wasn't going to do this, but I am. I've got a little jealousy in my right now. Uh, Brother James, uh, Killed 169 and three eighths inch bumps. Yeah. <laughs> so shy, everybody. Congratulations, my brother. Amen. If you have a need, just lift your hands to the Lord this morning. Brother David Curtis, pray and lead us in our needs this morning. Father, we're just so thankful for another opportunity to gather in your house, Lord, to gather in your presence this morning, Father. Lord, we thank you for the for the season. Thank you for the wonderful Christmas that you blessed. I know so many people to have this year, Father. And I lift those up that may be struggling or suffering, and that, that it wasn't a pleasant time for them, God. I pray that you would bless them. And going forward, I pray that you would bless them to have a wonderful year in 2021. Father, in the name of Jesus, all these uh, these lifted hands, Father, all these mentioned requests that you've heard, you know every one, Lord. And Father, we corporately just bind our faith together and trust and believe in you to meet each and every one of these needs uh, represented here this morning. Father, I pray, God, for the, uh, the service, the New Year's Eve service, Lord, that your spirit be poured out you would bless this in the name of Jesus. And Father, for the service today, I pray that your spirit be poured out, God, that you anoint our pastor to preach and bring forth your word. And Father, I just pray that you would uh, change lives, Lord, here today, Father. Anyone here doesn't know you as Lord and Savior, Father, let it not 
leave this place here this morning, God, before making you the Lord and Savior of their life. I just again ask that you would forgive us when we fall short and fail you, and thank you again for all your many blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's worship and give and bring your offering forward this morning. God bless you so much.
circumstances. God, our Lord, it's greater than our problems. And I think if we can just learn to turn our hearts and our eyes on Him, that He will prove to us how great our God is.
shirt, you don't know my job. <laughs> it's been a struggle the last year. I have to say I've been walking on the same crooked, dragging my right leg. But if I tell them, notice me dragging my right foot, that's what's wrong. Uh, I don't have any carpet left in my right knee. It's gone, all on bone. So if any of y'all have dealt with that before, you know what it's like. So, um, and uh, I attribute to my profuse sweating a lot of time is pain. Y'all see me stepping side to side up here and raising my feet. That's me just trying to find a good leg to stand on. But you know what? I'm going to praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Oh, my. Oh. These surgery ain't going to keep me down. I can guarantee you that. Uh, so uh, this song we're going to do is one I'm sure y'all heard before. It's a really good song. And Sister Carmen to talk about one name. The name of Jesus. When you call on his name. Amen. Amen. It's just miracles. So we're going to try to uh, do this song for you guys. Uh, it's called I Speak Jesus. Uh, it's a really great song. It talks about addiction. It talks about depression. Everything that we deal with in this world that we live in. Uh, we just got to focus on removing the world from within ourselves and filling ourselves with the Holy Spirit. Y'all worship with us. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind.
tsunami. He was talking about, you know, how you feel when your car is just gone and all that. Wait your whole body aches, amen. I, yes, I tell these young guys, I said, I got suits over, you are, amen. This morning, we're going to get back to the message, if then. A lot of people brag about being like Christ, but are you? Don't poke your neighbor and say, when we say that we are Christian, we are professing to the world that we are Christ-like. Amen? And if He is our example, then He's the one that we should follow. Now, the only other time that I find in Scripture people point someone, Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. But we're all going to walk the same. Amen? Amen? So he's talking about the attributes of Christ. He's talking to the church of Colossians. And he said, if then you are risen with him, if then you are under the banner of Christ, if then you go under this profession, then there's some things you should be doing. Amen. Amen? Before I get into this word, we welcome our visitors again. We have George and Teresa Gallagher. It's an honor to have you today. We love you very much. And... Uh, you won't see me right at the conclusion of service. I've got to get on the road. So I'll have other pastors here if you need prayer. I have Brother Chris, Brother Willie. I have others that are here that will pray with you. And I forgot to mention Sister Linda. She was exposed to COVID as well. I'm about sick and tired of COVID. Amen. I'm about ready. I've had enough of that COVID stuff. Amen. Amen. You know, you can only eat beans so many meals and it kind of gets old. Now, I'm not tired of having COVID. COVID everywhere if you look. So I know God's bigger than COVID. How about you? Amen. 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 We need to pray this stuff ends. Amen. We need to pray. Now, if if I offend you by some of my statements, get over it. We better hope and pray this election gets overturned. Our church and our life is not going to be the same. So we better pray and stand behind the conservative values of God. Amen. Now, somebody said, what are you running for? The county line right after church. Amen. Now, we stopped at verse 5. We, we're going to pick right back up there again. And I'm going to tell you, we're not going to finish today. You're going to have enough. Either you're going to change your life or you're going to be so upset with the preacher. But there are some things that we've got to gauge ourselves with, and it's the Word of God. It's not trying to be as good as Brother Joe. Certainly not good enough trying to be like, I want to be good as Brother Law. No, you don't. You want to be like Christ. Amen. That's who we want to be like. Amen. So begin at verse 5. Now, I like how he started the first if, then now he starts this one with their four. Therefore, put to death your members. A young preacher killed all of his church. That was a joke. Hey, man, not really. I mean, y'all just tell me. I see if you're paying attention. Therefore, put to death your members, which are on the earth. Now, we're talking about individuals. Individuals, fornication, the things that individuals battle, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience. In which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. Isn't it amazing how hard and judgmental the church can be towards some people? Forgetting that that was us before grace and mercy was imparted to us. We shouldn't damage them with judgment. We should be praying for them. Amen? We should be praying for them and lifting them up that they could find the forgiveness and grace of God. But now you yourselves are to put off 
these. Anger. Anybody ever get angry? It's not a sin to get angry. It says anger and sin not. Wrath. Malice. Blasphemy. Filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds. And then put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ is all in all. I was asked, how come something like Scythian, who were the Scythians? They were the barbaric of the barbaric. They were the worst that you could imagine these people were the evil ones. If you wanted to have someone turn, that was the worst that you could become of that region. And he says this, Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another, forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. We'll stop there. May the Lord bless His Word today. Now, when you're saved, you become different. Do you agree? Amen. We absolutely, there is a change and people can see a difference that is in your life when Jesus Christ becomes the Lord and Savior of your life. And because of this thing, we've got to put to death some things that we struggle with. We struggle with so many issues in life, but He said, because now you are the elect of God, you need to put to death fornication. Uncleanness, passion, evil desire, covetousness, which is idolatry. I got to tell you that I have coveted. So have you. But we do it in things like this. I go to love lady in that ranch on the right. I said, God, I wish that you would let me have that. But God bless him with another. Really, he wasn't the fourth thought. Mine was trying to get that ranch, amen. That place is beautiful. And I always say, oh Lord, give him something better. I had to remember. I was told as long as you're in the church, as long as you end something with God, bless you, it's okay. God give them. Well, just God bless them. But you see, there's some things that we should not have in our body, our spirit man anymore. When we are consumed with things that deteriorate our spirit man, we need to make sure they're put to death. There's a lot of desires that should not be in a child of God's mind and in their heart. We should put those things to death. Christ, I want to be like you and so therefore I ask you to sanctify me. To make me what you would want me to be. Now in verse 7, it says, You yourselves used to walk in these things when you lived in them. How many forget where God has brought us from? Amen. And so we look at others in an attitude of judgment. I cannot believe that they're that way. Forgetting until Jesus come and saved us, that was us. We walk in the same manner that they walk, but yet we want to be critical and hard on everybody else. We want judgment to be easy rendered toward us. I want to tell you one thing. We forget how good that God's mercy and grace has been to us. If it wasn't for the mercy and grace of God, none of us would be here today. I'm thankful that God brought me out and gave me a brand new opportunity to be like Him. Anybody here to this morning? In Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 2, referring back to this verse, it said, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, 
According to the prince of the power there, the spirit who now works in the son of disobedience. In Titus chapter 3 verse 3, a confirmation to this verse when it said, For we ourselves were also once foolish, disobedient, deceived. We served various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But I've got news for you. In 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9, the end part of that verse says, that you may proclaim the praises of Him who called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. I'm not who I used to be. Why? Because God has called me out of there and set me free. Is anybody free here this morning? We need to be thankful that God has loved us. I don't want to be who I used to be. I don't want to act like I used to act. I don't want to be that scoundrel that I used to be. But God looked past all of that when I cried out to Him. And when I cried out to Him, He reached His hand down and lifted me out and said, I'm going to bring you out of that mess. I'm going to set you free. I'm going to take you out of the cloud in mind and the darkness and put you in light and let you walk after me. I don't know about you, but I'm thankful to the God that He loved me that much that He called me out. Amen. In verse 8 it says, but now. Now that was then. This is now. How many of you like to go back and change the days of your past? You lying rascal. Three of you raise your hand, the rest of you just sit there and look around. We all wish that there were some days that we could go back and do things different than we did. I do. I, I wish I hadn't been so quick to answer. I wish I hadn't been so critical or, or angry. I wish I'd have done things a whole lot different. So I can't go back. What I have to do is ask forgiveness for it and let God let me move on. Amen. I told you years ago, I never intended to be a preacher. That wasn't my first choice. Especially when you're a preacher's kid. Amen. Everything that gets blamed in the community is blamed on the preacher's kid. You better watch hanging out with them preachers, kid. They're the meanest bunch in this community. We were the most precious, humble <laughs> that you could ever imagine until we went to hanging out with the layman's kids. And they taught us how to do all those negative things. They went with it. It wasn't a preacher's kid. That wasn't my intent. I didn't want to be a preacher. I watched my mom and dad have to live in a glass house. It seemed like with everybody. You had to be perfect. And I got news for you. The Lofton boys were not perfect. We messed up. Two of them were rascals. I'll let you choose the two. Amen. But the fact of the matter is, I can't go back. But I am thankful he did call me. I'm glad that he had a plan bigger than my plan. I'm glad he could see down the road further than I could see down the road. And I'm thankful that I got to be a preacher. Because I'm going to tell you it's the greatest calling in the world. But he said, but now you've got to put off all these things. And he comes down and begin to say, anger. I still struggle with Houston traffic. I don't care who you are. Don't you tell me you're holy and go down and God, God bless you. Cut me off if you want to. <laughs> I still struggle with issues that they that upset me. And it's going to continue to upset me until I get over there. But I cannot let it consume me. We live in a world right now, everybody's going nuts. Used to be years ago, they'd say, pull over. Now they just come up by you. We live in a different world. But we still struggle with worldly things, but yet they do not consume us. We have the grace of God that lets us step over these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. <clears throat> if you scare somebody, you'll see what's inside of them. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth so speaks. Some of your hearts are rotten. No, you've got to be careful. 
and you've heard this, I've preached this for so many years, sweet and bitter water can't flow from the same fountain. Doesn't, doesn't flow from the same fountain. You've you got to be careful what you let come out now. That's just not talking about cursing. That's filthy jokes. Amen. That's things you should not be repeating to begin with, and that's filthy, and it becomes filthy when you let it come out of your mouth. So you have to guard yourself against something like this. You know what? It's easy to get caught up in gossip. It is. Somebody, you'll be sitting drinking coffee and two start on somebody before. If you're not careful, you'll get caught up in conversation. Amen. And it can become filthy. Amen? Amen. Anybody, boy? Amen. Some of you not listening to me. you got to be careful what we let come out of our mouth. Do not lie to one another. I have one rule around my house. Always tell the truth you live with. Amen. Amen. I'd rather you tell me the truth than to lie to me. If you broke it, tell me. We'll fix it. But if you hide it, you're going to have to keep hiding it and it's going to bite you. People, listen to me. You might think that the consequence is going to be so great, but always tell the truth. Your parents will stand with you, they will help you, and they will be there to get you out of anything as long as you tell the truth. Amen. Parents, you hear me this morning. I always encourage, tell me the truth. I can live with that, but you can't live with a lie. Because you're going to lie to cover up the lie to cover up the lie. And before long, you're going to forget who you lied to and you're in a mess. Always tell the truth. Church family, do not lie one to the other. If you put the scratch on that Buick outside, come in and find the owner of the Buick. Amen. Do not lie to one another. Amen. Amen. We live in a world that wants you to lie. Yeah. They'd rather you lie to them than tell them the truth. There's a lot of people that don't want to hear the truth. But you tell it to them anyway. Because the truth is what set you free. Amen. And we need freedom from the hold of the wicked one that is in the world. And so therefore we got to put these things behind us. Anybody hear me this morning? Amen. And so since you have put off the old man with his deeds. And you put on a brand new man. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says what? Sister Kara, therefore if anyone is his Christ, he is a new create. Old things of what? And behold what? All things, All things have become new. I'm not who I used to be. Even though I might have to pay what the old man did, I'm not that person anymore. I am brand new. I might have to live with some of the things that the old man did, but when I ask forgiveness and he called me out, I'm a brand new man. I might have done things that I've got to live the rest of my life with, but you can't hold that against a new man. Even though I have to drag it with me, I am a new creation in Jesus Christ. And therefore, as long as he forgives me, that's what really matters. Amen? Verse 10 talks about the and have put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge. You know, there's a lot of people who don't know the scripture. They weren't raised in church. We think they know, but they don't, because they've never been in the book. We take for granted that they should know a lot of things, but they don't. Now, I'm going to tell you what. Back in the 60s and 70s, you were raised in a manner. That was common to everybody. Yes. Amen. But the seventy seven didn't happen. Right. They began to roll their own cigarettes. <laughs> they began to have a free spirit. Right. They began to drive those wagons with the truckers on. Bell bottoms. Anybody remember that? Uh, and they're coming back. That's what I, what I heard. Hip hugs. 
you women don't know how to try, y'all don't need to try that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I need some waist hookers. <laughs> <laughs> things change. We lived in an era that things begin to change. Morals, values, family units. And I'm going to go ahead and say something, even though all of us are guilty. I wish to God cell phones were never created. find out news when we got home or we can read a newspaper. Right. But now, buddy, we Facebook it. Amen. We message it. I mean, on TikTok. Every time I hear that thing, my clock. All this has changed, but now look at the family unit. You can't even have a conversation with your family. Because everybody is device away, but I tell you what, the thing has an on and off switch that you can every now and then you need to tell the children to put it down, tell your wife to put it down, tell your husband to put it down, and let's just have something called a conversation. Amen? Things change, values change. And so therefore, he comes up and says this, he says, that you do not lie to one another since you have put the old man off his deeds, and be renewed in knowledge. According to the image who created him. Look at Romans 12. Too. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You've got to get a different way of thinking. That you may prove that what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. You've got to clean up your mind to begin to think a little bit differently. Look at 2 Corinthians 4, 16. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. I want to tell you, I'm closer to heaven today than I was three weeks ago. I'm renewed because I begin to look for him. All the things going on. My mind is on heaven. Every day I tell him, God, go ahead. If this is the day, come on and get me back. Right now, I'm ready to go. What you've got to do is keep your mind on God and the things of God, and then God can do something wonderful in your life. Yes, amen. Therefore, verse 12, as the elect of God, there's a comma. I, I like the fact that we've been elected by God. I knew you before you were created. Before you were formed in the womb, I knew you. And now we are elected by God to salvation. We are the elect of God. Now we are His children. And just think about this. Look around you at your brothers and sisters. If we're all part of the family of God. You hear me? We are the elect of God because we have accepted Him as our Lord and Savior. If then, then there's some things we got to put on. Tender mercies. I'm going to tell you what. I was raised in a country that dogs were outside. Anybody with them? Had a drum, had hay in them, had them on the chain. You let them out, they were for hunting and stuff like that. And, and, and I was on Facebook. I'm going to confess it to you. And they're looking for somebody that come to a shelter and chain the dog up in the snow. Left it. Just and the dog was scared to death. He was just shaky. He would have died. But one of the workers forgot something and went back and got that dog. I don't even have a horse in the race. But I wanted to catch him and beat him with a chain. Tender murder. I had more tender than I ever was. I told you about the dog in the cage. But I almost took it to the house, but I knew I would rather to go ahead and let that man take that dog back than to face her. She's a dog person. I'm not really a dog person, but 
we are more tender toward things than we've ever been. The older you get, it seems like the more soft you do. If you don't believe that, if you've got grandchildren, listen to your children. They'll lie. Well, he didn't treat us that way. No, because you were a heathen and they're not. I can send them home and I couldn't you. You live with me. And it seems like, and my brother has just got his first great grand. And he said, you know how crazy I was about my granddaughter? I said, yeah. He said, I told her she's at the back of the train now. <laughs> we get more tender, it seems like, the older that we get. And there's nothing wrong with that. We need tender mercy. But we need the tender mercies of God. Just like Carmen was talking about this morning. That we come and just get so caught up with God to tell Him how much we love Him. And be tender, not let the world dictate to us instead of us dictating to the world that we're going to serve God. Kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering. I'm thinking about humility again with James standing up bragging about his deer. <laughs> Love it. Then it says bearing with one another. Anybody know what a set of bearings is? Anybody ever pack bearing? Any of you women ever pack a set of bearings? Oh, let me go ahead and say yourself. Get some buddy bearings. It's easy to do. A couple of squirts of grease, you're good to go. They keep everything moving smooth. Which is very, very important, isn't it? It keeps everything rolling proper, keeps everything in the right way. And that's what Jesus said. You've got to be like a set of bearings, bearing with one another. Now, the word bear, simply defined, is this. I know you said, Pastor, that's a little far fetched. It's a person's way of standing or moving in relationship to another. There's a lot of people that you have to bear with. You don't agree with a lot of things, but because God loves you, you bear with them. Even though. After you get through talking to him, you go home and fall on your knees and pray. God give me grace and give me strength, but we bear with him. There's a lot of people that will come and they'll, they, you know that they're really not good for your relationship, but yet you bear with them, hoping that one day they change. Anybody got any rough friends? If not, send me after church and I'll become your friend. But the fact of the matter, we've got to bear with one another, even in their... Anybody ever been aggravated? And we know that we deal with them. We have given them instruction 50 times, and you know they're not going to listen, but you bear with them because you love them. You love them in spite of themselves. Now, I've got to finish up, and I'm going to finish up with this, but we're going to start here next week. Look at forgiveness. And I've got to get on the road. Even as Christ forgave you, so do you also. Now, if then we're like Christ, we got to learn how to forgive. Now, we can sit here and debate all day long. I'll forgive them, but I'll never forget them. I've heard it. What does it mean to forgive? Well, now let's look. Even as Christ has forgiven you. Now, I want you to look. Are we supposed to be like Christ? Anybody ever been hurt? It's hard to forgive when you're hurt. Forgive them, and I'll never forgive them. Listen to your attitude speak. Have you forgiven? Now listen. And we'll pick back up this, because I'm just going to quickly hit this, and you've got to come back next week to it. On the cross, Jesus Christ cries to the Father. Forgive them, for they know not what they do. 
is he talking about? Well, now let's look at what they did to him. They lied on him, despised, mocked, scourged, beat, betrayed, spat on, crucified, him being in the most tremendous pain you can ever imagine. And while he's still alive, he cries, Father, forgive me. If then we're like Christ, how can you cry out when somebody's done all that to you? Well, he was God. He was in the form of man. The pain that he was suffering was suffering on the man side of him. I know it best his heart as a God, but yet his human side, he's crying out, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Hold on. We say we forgive. We don't forget, but how's your actions toward others? That's a question. Are we following his example? A couple things that I want you to understand about forgiveness, and I'll, I'll close. Number one, forgiveness brings healing. If you never forgive, if you keep it hanging over somebody's head, relationships can never be healed. It'll never be the same because you will not allow it to be. Forgiveness brings healing. Number two. When you say we don't forget, we got to look at some scriptures. Forgetting those things which are behind you. That's earthly things. That all the things you do in the earth. Look at a couple of scriptures and I'll, I'll leave. I won't bother you the rest of the day. Philippians 3.13. Paul says it. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended. But one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are here. So there's some things I gotta do. I've got to forget what's behind me. Because if I keep thinking about what's behind me, I'm gonna be focused there and I'll never walk a straight line again. Number two, the next verse is this. Look at Isaiah chapter 43, verse 18 and then verse 25. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of the old. Verse 25. I, even I, am he who blots out your transgression for my own sake. The reason we forgive is for our sake, not theirs. And I will not remember your sins. You need to be thankful that God has blotted out all our mess ups and he doesn't remember them anymore. You can try to bring them up. And he said, I don't know what you're talking about. Because they're blotted out. Now what he's talking about, they used to use a papyrus paper that was white and pure. And they would put something on it. And that ink would stain it. But yet they would take a hyssop and they'd just keep pressing and pressing and pressing. until all the ink was lifted out. And the paper was just white as snow again. I want to tell you, if you want healing for yourself, if you want healing in relationships, if you want to move on with life like it's never before, then you've got to learn to forgive like Christ forgave. Amen? Give me a hand clap of faith, is all right? In closing, he said, above all, put on love. You can't love if you don't forgive. Amen. And what does love do? It covers the multitude of what? God will always love you. My mother is. I ain't gonna say she's old, but she played with Noah. And uh, she always told me this one thing. I'll always love. 
And I don't care. I don't get to see her that often anymore. But when I see her, she wraps her arms around me and says, I love you. And you know what? I know she does. Amen. But I've got news for you. You can have been away from God and making a circle, a big circle. But when you come back, you're going to find the Savior. Adam's right there with his arms wide open and said, I love you. I always have loved you. Let love dominate your life instead of the world dominating your life. Would you bow your heads this morning? This morning, I want Brother Chris to lead us in prayer of dismissal. If you want prayer, he will come here in the front and pray with you. I love you. Pray for me as I get on the road to go do this funeral. God bless you. Well, I thank you, God, for this time, Lord. I thank you, Father God, for your love and mercy and your holy grace, God, in your forgiveness, Lord. Lord, I ask and pray, God, this will be your coming, Lord, 2021, Father God. We ask and pray, God, that you'll shine upon us like never before, Lord. Father God, you've already done your part, Lord, continue to help us to do our part, Lord God. Lord, I ask and pray this morning, Lord, if there's anybody here that God doesn't know you, God is their personal Savior, God. I pray, God, before they leave, God, they will, God, because there's nothing like serving you, Lord. There's nothing like the peace, God, that you bring in our life, Father God, and renewal, Father. Lord, I thank you, God, for your grace, for your mercy. Lord, I ask and pray, God, for your blessings, God, as we leave and go to the house, Lord, in your precious holy name. We all say it, church.